Hey everyone and welcome to another Nielsen Networking video. The video ahead actually came to me from, I hate to say it, but the suffering of one of my viewers who was trying to install a pre-built Kali Linux image into VirtualBox. Now, long story short, and to get to the point, they were trying to install an image from Kali.org that was still in 7-zip format. They had not decompressed it or uh, unpacked it, whatever you want to call it, um, whatever works for you. So I thought, you know what? There's probably other folks out there that are having the same issue. Why not create a video on how to go out, download and install 7-zip and then give you a mini tutorial, if I can speak, on how to use it. So that's what we're going to do ahead in this video. The first thing you're going to want to do is head on over to 7-zip.org. When you get there, you're in all likelihood going to want the first download option for the 64-bit x64. That's going to be for Windows. You're just going to go ahead and click it. If you did need it for Linux, you can go over here to the download section and you can scroll down and they do have it for Linux down here. Um, and they do have some unofficial other packages for um, some other operating systems like AIX and all that stuff. But the, the main two that are supported are Linux right here and uh, Windows on the main screen. So once we have that downloaded, we're gonna go on a, we're gonna want to go ahead and open it up. And it's a super tiny installer. I'm talking, I think it's like 1.5 megabytes. If you wanted to relocate it to somewhere else other than the default, which is program files slash 7-zip, now's the time to do it. Otherwise, just go ahead and install it. We're going to close it out. And ladies and gentlemen, that is how you install, that is how you download and install 7-zip. You know, all that in under two minutes. So now we're going to go on and look at how it actually works. And how it works is pretty basic. Uh, it's actually very similar in some ways to the built-in um, Windows option to send to a zip file. So if you just wanted to go to a zip, Windows does offer you the option to do right-click, send to, compress zip folder, Windows. So we'll name that Windows. So that's great, right? You can create a zip file in Windows. So, But if you want to do any other format other than zip, you wanted to compress using, you know, 7-zip format, you wanted to compress using tar, uh, gzip, RAR, I could go on, you're going to need a different program. And you're either going to have to pay for something like WinRAR or WinZip, or you're going to do the smart thing, and you're going to go out and get the free to use 7-Zip. And that's why we're showing you this video. That and to avoid any uh, future frustrations from our friends trying to load their uh, pre-built Kali Linux images. So we have our Windows zip file that was created via, you know, right-click, send to compress file, the built-in Windows function. And now we're going to go ahead and create some 7-Zip um, archive. So we're going to right click here, go to our new shiny 7-zip menu, and we're going to go to add to test folder dot 7z, which is our 7-zip format. And as you can see, it actually compresses it at about half the size. Um, and so let's try this. Let's do test folder 2 right here, and you get another option down here. You could just, if you just wanted to do it in a zip format, you could do that as well. And there you go. And there is a third option you could do here. If you get really crazy, you can right click and do 7-zip and go to archive. And then you go through and you can change the um, archive format, compression level, compression method, all that stuff that you don't ever really need to do. But if you wanted to go, go for it, have at it. Do you, I'm not gonna stop you. Um, so that's great, right? We, we now know how to create the archives. Now, how do we go ahead and do the opposite? And I'm sure all the overachievers that are watching are saying, well, obviously we would just do the opposite. And while that is technically true, there are a few things I want to warn you about just to save you a little bit of grief. Um, and let me show you what I mean. So out here, you're going to get a few options when you go right click, extract over here. If you extract files, you'll get a menu. And this is cool because it tells you where it's going, right? You know, it's going to the desktop. You can even put it in a, a new folder. So it extracts them all out in that folder. Piece of cake, right? That's how we like it. It's, it's clean. It's happy. Uh, another option over here is, let's do the 7-zip now. You go here and you go extract here. This is a great option too because this is going to extract them all to the test folder folder. There it is. Cool. Happy again. Clean. Organized. Now here's where we get in trouble. We right-click on this one right here. And we're like, okay, we're, we're super awesome. We're just going to go extract here. No problem. No bubbles, no troubles. Boom. Oh, my God. All of your desktop. So the problem is if you click that option and that archive happened to have been, I don't know, a thousand files, they are now all over your desktop or wherever else you decompress them. So you need to be careful which 
option you pick when you go to um, extract or um, decompress them. So with that said, that kind of covers all the basic features you're going to need for 7-Zip. Um, if you have any questions, throw them in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, you know the spiel. I would appreciate a like. Uh, even better yet, subscribe for future content. And you go out and have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much.